Hello, welcome. Today's video will answer the question, do you really need the new Lucky Q3 camera? We'll quickly cover all five Lucky Q series cameras, but then we're gonna spend most of the video on the Lucky Q, Lucky Q2, and Lucky Q3. We'll look at each camera side by side, example photos, and then stay with me until the end and I'll summarize which camera could be the best fit for your needs. Hello, Lucky fans. Matt here from MrLucky.com. I've been reviewing and using Lucky cameras for the last decade. And for full transparency, I own the Lucky Q camera, but I borrowed the Lucky Q2 and Lucky Q3. This video was made possible thanks to one of my photography workshop students, John, when I was teaching in the US. So a huge thanks to John. Before we jump in, is it definitely the Lucky Q series cameras that you want and not the Leica M camera? If you're on the fence between a Leica M or a Leica Q camera, check out my recent video, Leica M11 versus Leica Q3. Assuming you definitely want a Leica Q camera, let's jump in. To help explain the differences between the different Leica Q cameras, I put together a series of slides to help illustrate each point and cover hopefully most of the basics from each camera. If you enjoy the slides, please smash the like button. They did take quite a long time to put together. Okay, first, the Lucky Q timeline. So the first Lucky Q was actually the Lucky Q released in 2015. Following that in 2018 came the Lucky QP. This has got some slight benefits over the Lucky Q, but to the main part, it's a very similar 24 megapixel camera. Next in 2019 came the next big jump up, which is the Lucky Q2, which now offers 47 megapixels, as we'll get into in this video. And following that in 2020, with the release of the first monochrome Lucky Q camera, the Lucky Q2 monochrome. For those of you who are not aware, this is a black and white only camera. Then new for 2023, the brand new Lucky Q3. It's probably worth pointing out the obvious that all three cameras have a few things in common. The dimensions and form factor of all three cameras are pretty similar. You've got the tilt screen of the Q3, which changes the shape slightly. All three cameras come equipped with the now pretty famous Leica Sumlux 28mm 1.7 fixed prime lens. This lens gives you autofocus, manual focus, and the option of macro mode with a close focus distance of 17 centimeters. All three cameras offer you image stabilization and all three cameras offer you the famous Leica colors. Let's now jump into the details for the Q versus Q2 versus Q3. Looking at the three cameras side by side, you can see first of all, the biggest difference is the megapixels. Lucky Q, 24 megapixel, Lucky Q2, 47 megapixels, and Lucky Q3, now 60 megapixels. Now, what does that actually look like in real terms? So here's a photo on the left, the Lucky Q, in the middle, the Q2, and on the right, the Q3. As you can see, there's quite a big jump up from 24 to 47, and then less of a jump up from 47 to 60. Okay, next, ISO. Lucky Q goes from ISO 100 to 50,000. Lucky Q2 keeps the same base ISO of 100, but now goes up to 100,000. And then the Lucky Q3 has a new base of ISO 50 and keeps the high ISO of 100,000. I've got a high ISO test coming up, so stay tuned. Lucky Q cameras are leaf shutter cameras and so they offer an electronic shutter. The maximum electronic shutter speed on the Lucky Q camera is 16 thousandths of a second, the same on the Q2, but the new Q3 now has 40 thousandths of a second. All three Lucky Q cameras come equipped with a mechanical shutter and that has a maximum shutter speed of 2 thousandths of a second. In terms of weight, the Lucky Q is actually the lightest at 640 grams. It got heavier with the Lucky Q2 and Lucky Q3 is even heavier because of the additional tilt screen. Next, batteries. The original Lucky Q camera uses the same batteries as the little Lucky CL that I reviewed in the last video. The Lucky Q2 came with a high capacity battery and that's the same battery as found in the Lucky SL and Lucky SL2 and Lucky SL2S. And then with the release of the new Lucky Q3, Lucky have released a new high capacity battery the same size as the like SL series battery for the Lucky Q2, but it also offers you USB-C charging, which is a great benefit for kind of on-the-go charging. All three Lucky Q cameras come with a viewfinder diopter. The difference is the diopter of the Lucky Q2 and Lucky Q3 is recessed, which means you can't knock it, whereas the diopter of the Lucky Q is not recessed and can be knocked quite easily, which is a bit of a frustration. All three cameras come with a three-inch rear LCD screen display, the difference is the Lucky Q3 now has a tilting display. It tilts horizontally, which means you can shoot from the hip, but it's less useful if you want to shoot, say, in portrait orientation because the, the screen does not tilt in that direction. 
When looking at the back of the camera, the buttons are different on each Lucky Q series camera. The original Lucky Q has got the same buttons as the Lucky M240, so five buttons on the left hand side. The Lucky Q2 has got the same three button layout as the Lucky CL and Lucky SL2. The Lucky Q3 comes with a new button layout because of the tilt screen. The buttons have now moved from the left to the right hand side and you've now only got two buttons. And then the FN function button has been moved up onto the top of the back next to the other small function button. All three cameras come with an OLED EVF viewfinder. The Lucky Q and Lucky Q2 have got the 3.68 million resolution viewfinder whereas the Q3 has got the 5.76 million resolution viewfinder. In real world use, I didn't notice a huge difference, but I think the Lucky Q viewfinder is slightly clearer. Okay, next, this is a big one for some of you, and it's the reason why some people told me that they use a Lucky Q series camera and not a Lucky M camera. The Lucky Q2 and the Lucky Q3 come with the IP52 weather sealing, which means you can use both cameras in less favorable conditions, should we say whereas the original Lucky Q has no weather sealing, the same as a Lucky M camera. If you're a photographer that also enjoys a bit of video, the original Lucky Q camera gives you 1080p video, the Lucky Q2 gives you 4K video, and the new Lucky Q3 offers from 8K video. In addition to that, the Lucky Q3 now comes with phase detect autofocus, similar to say non Leica camera brands, which is generally faster and probably more reliable, then the original contrast detect autofocus found in the Q, the Q2, and all Lucky SL series cameras to date. Talking of autofocus, if you shoot quickly, the Lucky Q offers you 10 frames per second, the Q2, 20 frames per second, and then the Q3 is actually dropped back down to 15 frames per second. The Lucky Q series cameras come with a 28mm fixed prime lens, but you can crop in camera. The Lucky Q offers you 35mm and 50mm JPEGs in addition to 28. The Lucky Q2 with higher megapixels now offers you 35mm cropping, 50mm cropping and 75mm cropping in camera. And then the 60 megapixel Lucky Q3 you can crop in camera, 35mm, 50mm, 75mm and now 90mm as well. I just want to stop the video and say a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. Patreon is my teach and inspire platform and for more information and content find the link below. Okay, next to Biggie, perhaps the reason that you click this video, image quality. So I took the same photos with all three cameras. My original plan was to open all the photos in Photoshop, raw unedited photos, lay them out side by side so we can compare. The problem I found is my eyesight just isn't good enough to see the differences at the screen this size. I came up with a new plan. I took a horizontal crop from each of the photos and then lay them on top of each other so you can see hopefully much more clearly the difference between the Q, Q2 and Q3 at different ISOs in different conditions. So first, the high ISO test. I started at 6400 because most cameras are great at 3200. As you can see, all three cameras offer very clean looking results, I think. Next, ISO 12800. Now perhaps surprisingly to me, the Lucky Q2 seemed the weakest of the three cameras. Yes, it makes sense that the Q3 is the best because it's uh, the most modern, but because of the lower megapixel of the Lucky Q camera, I think that's why it's more favorable than the Lucky Q2 when shot in low light. All three cameras are shot at their maximum resolution, uncropped, and these are raw files flipped to JPEGs in Lightroom without any editing. If you want to get better low light performance from the Q2 and Q3, I think if you use them at a lower resolution, you'll get a better performance. Next, ISO 25,000. Now by this point, all three photos are getting more noisy. You can make up your own mind how noisy you accept your photos to be, but the worst of the three seems to be the Q2 again, and the Q and the Q3 seem pretty similar. Also note the difference in the colors. All photos taken at the same time, side by side, yet you notice the colors are slightly different from each camera sensor. Next, ISO 50,000. Now you can see the banding that's starting to appear on the Lucky Q camera. That reminds me of the banding on my Leica M240. And the Lucky Q3 is the cleanest of all three photos. I didn't go beyond 50,000. I don't think realistically we need to shoot at more than 50,000 when you've got a 1.7 prime lens. With each new camera iteration, they normally say it's one stop better than the previous model. So I did a test. So at the bottom, you've got the Q camera shot at ISO 6400 the Q2 at 12,800 
and the Q3 at 25,000. I think the new Lucky Q3 performs very well in low light, but make up your own mind. And then I did the same test at one stop higher. So 12,800, 25,000 and 50,000. Again, I think the Q and the Q3 photos are acceptable from the, the little crop we're looking at. And the Q2 looks slightly darker and slightly more noisy. Comment below which ones you think is the best. Now, as well as testing low light performance, I wanted to test normal light performance, shall we say, at ISO 100. With the 1.7 lens, this photo was shot at 60th of a second ISO 100. And you can see that all three photos seem pretty similar in terms of colours and the general look. Here is a closer crop of the same photos. I think the Q2 and Q3 photos seem to have more detail in the curtains, but that might just have been my focus point placement on the Lucky Q photo. Here is another ISO 100 test, this time shot at f4. Again, if we take a closer look, I think all three photos look pretty much near identical, which raises the question, do you actually need the Lucky Q3? Let's now summarise which Lucky camera is best for you. First, the original Lucky Q. I think the Lucky Q camera offers you the best value for money if you're trying to get that famous 28mm 1.7 lens. As you notice from the test, all three cameras take very similar photos at ISO 100. And if you crop in camera, 24 megapixels is normally more than enough for most people. As we mentioned, the Lucky Q doesn't have weather sealing, so it's better suited for fair weather photographers. And if, like me, you use an older computer, the 24 megapixel file size is much more old computer friendly compared to the bigger files from modern cameras. OK, next, the Lucky Q2. You may want the Lucky Q2 if you want more megapixels. This is particularly useful if you like to shoot JPEGs and want to use the SID 5mm or 50mm in-camera cropping, or if you do a lot of cropping in post-production. Benefits of Lucky Q2 include the recessed diopter and now you have full weather ceiling for wet weather photography. And then the big question, do you need the new Lucky Q3? Your answer may be yes if you're looking for a camera with a tilt screen. Let's say you're a hip shooter. If you shoot JPEGs with the send 5mm and 90mm cropping or if you crop very heavily in post. One of my favourite features, the Lucky Q3 now comes armed with the USB-C charging capabilities, the same as the Lucky M11. And then for those of you looking for the fastest possible autofocus, the Lucky Q3 has the phase detect system. For those of you that love shooting in low light, you can now shoot at higher ISOs, I would say ISO 25,000 quite easily with the Lucky Q3. If you're new here or if you've just treated yourself to a Lucky camera, click the link below to get your free Lucky Club welcome pack to help get you started. Once you've got your new Lucky Q series camera, you then need to edit the photos. Rather than waste hours of time in Photoshop, you can use my one-click edit presets for Lightroom. Click the link below to find full preset packs for the Lucky Q, the Lucky Q2 Monochrome, the Lucky Q3, and there's also presets coming for the Lucky Q2.